Okay, so welcome to the Otcast. I'm lucky enough to be in Tahiti and have Kelly Slater beside me, the one and only. Thank you, Kelly, for joining me. Yeah, good to see you. Wow, good to see you too. You know I flew all the way to Tahiti to interview you. No. <laughs> no pressure. That's a good, a good, a good, good, good excuse. It was a good well, excuse a to come to Tahiti for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Too bad I didn't know beforehand yeah, until right. yesterday and then we happened to see each other in the water. And I know. Like, Can we do this? Yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> thanks so much. That's so cool yeah. of you. Um, first thing I'm going to speak of, because I wasn't over there yesterday, but the... Um, at the Corona Bar, you were watching the uh, UFC, right, yeah, um, yeah. DS, and uh, what, McGregor, McGregor, was it? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and he'd the boys... Be, he'd be insulted if you didn't know his name. Really? Oh, oh yeah. no, I'm scared. <laughs> 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 and I did not know that you were purple belt in jiu-jitsu. I didn't know that either. Are you? No. That's what they said? No. You're not? No. That's what Joel said? No. It's not true? No, no, Joel didn't know he's talking about. Nah, Joel's setting me up. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> but you do do a little bit of jiu-jitsu? I do a little bit, yeah. Little bit, I enjoy yeah. it. I follow yeah. it a lot. I watch a you lot. I got a lot of friends who do it. And yeah. I, I've trained quite a bit here and there, but mm -hmm. I've never trained continually enough uh, to, to, go through to sort of advance. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so you won your heat yesterday. You look really confident out there. Um, looking for a good result here? No. No. No, I'd that like is to lose a stupid right away. question, isn't yeah. it? You're going to set me up this whole interview, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> no, I, you know what, though? I hadn't surfed. I surfed. Um, I basically haven't surfed since J-Bay. Oh, seriously? Um, yeah, I surfed uh, one day in like one foot waves in New York, just mm -hmm. briefly, with a couple short surfs about two or three weeks ago, a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, right, like the day after I left um, Africa. Yeah. And then uh, I had two sort of half sessions in Florida about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Wow. Is that it? And I, I just, I haven't surfed. Um, I, uh, I went to California for a few days, had some work stuff to do, and then I was going to try and surf. The waves actually got nice two days ago when oh. I was leaving there, mm -hmm. but I didn't have time in the morning. We were packing and stuff, so okay. I, did, I didn't get any time to really work on anything. But I yeah. mean, Trestles is pretty different to, uh, you know, at Trestles I go right. And it's much definitely key. different at Chopo. At Chopo, I go yeah. left and get barreled, and I don't. I know, know. <laughs> but you can do that like blindfolded, like. But you often don't surf a lot in between. Yeah, I'll go contest, don't you? Yeah, I, I just, you know, I just, for whatever reason, mm. if I'm not motivated, I'll just save it until I have a heat, and then it kind of wakes me up. And it does. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think you can really pull that off at a at a wave where you're just um, you know it's about the maneuvers and the whole flow. You know, yeah. I think you have to be on your game with the mm -hmm. airs and the turns and. You're timing everything perfect, but mm. in barrels, I think you know it's it is like walk like riding a bike. Yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, it's not too hard to. I mean, uh, it's more about reading the lineup than it is about the surfing. Mm. At that point, I know. And then when it comes to the barrel riding, it's 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 small technical things in the barrel, and it's how greedy you want to get, how deep you want to get in the tube. But yeah. you know that's that is second second nature. Yeah, it must be like it kind of works though, doesn't it? Because if you're not nailing your body surfing like eight hours a day you can surf for longer like yeah. your longevity has been incredible well i've i've been uh blessed with longevity without having too many bad injuries but i am i am carrying a pretty serious back problem um okay. which i have been for a number of years now and you know i've just kind of i don't know if i've been in denial of it or pretending it's not as bad as it or what mm -hmm. it is or whatever but like i have quite a lot of days i don't actually surf because my back hurts that's it seriously yeah so a little bit of an MR syndrome. It's an MR. I was just about to <laughs> mention MR. Yeah, is it lower or? It's lower back. It's lower. Yeah, same. It's I have it the same. Mornings are hard. I get scoliosis bad. pretty badly okay. in my back, and mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I get a real imbalance where I'm like short on one side and long on the other, and then in up middle back it kind of goes the opposite. I got this big sort of S okay. curve in my back. Wow. So, um, you know, and because it's surfing, you're so it's so asymmetrical. You yeah. know, you're just going one way, one foot forward, and everything's. You know the muscles you use and everything are so mm. imbalanced, really. Mm -hmm. So it, it it exaggerates the curve. It does. And what about the golf? Does that, is that, that still that plenty? That's that also asymmetrical. Help. Yeah. No, it didn't help at all. No. So yeah, I try to swing the other way a little bit. Oh, you, you do? Know? I actually can hit the ball left-handed. Oh, you so. can. Yeah. Wow, she was. And yeah. you still surfing a fair bit left-handed? Surfing goofy. Goofy. Uh, here and there, you know what? I Does actually, that kind of straighten it up, you reckon, if you can surf goofy for a while? It could. It could. I, I actually think it's a really good process for your brain because mm. you have to think, um, oh, okay, yeah. you, I feel backwards. Okay, what do I do? Oh, okay, no, that's how I move those muscles. You know, I think it's a good exercise for the brain. In fact, I want to take about like six weeks or two months 
and and um, and film the process of actually only mm -hmm. surfing Goofy Foot. Wow. And see how quickly or slowly I would advance yeah, during right. that time yeah. and not catch a wave regular foot for like a couple months. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. And yeah, I, I was talking to. Uh, who was I talking That'd be to? Crazy, hey? I was talking to somebody the other day about about, about goofy that? Foot, about well about surfing goofy foot yeah. and how uh, you know your whole life you, you you learn to wipe out and and I, well I was just talking about how I don't I don't get hurt very often when I wipe out because mm. I, I understand how the wave moves mm. and and I've been able to put myself in the right place you know and and fight at the right time or relax at the right time mm -hmm. you know so I I know where to get but that's only when I fall regular foot I find oh, when foot. I fall goofy foot yeah, right. everything's backwards. And I can't get my, you know, regular foot, I'm used to this move, yeah, right? Yeah. And I can swim to where I want to. But yeah. goofy foot, I fall and I have the worst wipeouts on like two foot waves. And you don't know where your board's coming in. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, right. It's so bizarre. Yeah, and there's a, a totally different awareness. Yeah, I'd, I'd loved all those heats you had with Shana, especially yeah. up here when you guys were. Hopefully we get another one one day. Yeah, he was ripping, hey? Like he won that contest in the Maldives? Oh, yeah. Uh, not this year. Oh, it wasn't this year? No, it Taj won this year. Oh, ta did he really? Last week, yeah. Oh, okay, Taj, I thought Shane beat But Shane Taj. won last year. Oh, he did, yeah. He so beat him in the, tw I think Shane won the twin fin maybe? or the oh, okay. One of, the, one of them. Oh, the overall Taj the Overall Taj won. Yeah. Do you still keep in contact with Shane and Lisa? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane's uh, son, Jackson's my godson. Okay. And um, Kalani and Lisa hang out quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we, we're around each other a lot. Cool. Yeah. I was going to ask you how things are going with Kalani. She's sitting right there. So uh, you can ask her. You guys have been together for ages. Yeah, a long time. Long time, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. thinking of kids yet? Um, well, we've, we've thought put about that. Yeah. Sure <laughs> you put me on the spot. You put me on the spot, aren't you? <laughs> sorry. And you're both right there. Hey, like, that's good. Well, that. you know, it's because you, <laughs> you're you in the process again. I am, yeah. yes, yes. I'm going to have another bub at the tender age of 50. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There you Start. go. Yeah. Third one. Yeah. Third one. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, well, well you once upon a time, you did have a stepson. Stepson, too. Rainer. Rainer. Yeah, and, I got um, Rainer. Yeah, Rainer. Actually, I, I heard from Rainer not long ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. Rainer, yeah. actually, he's left the snow. He's been in the snow for like 10 years all year round. So he's been swapping Australia for Canada, and now he's over it, and he's going to oh, move yeah. back to the Gold Coast. Yeah, he yeah. told me he was going to get back into surfing. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's a good boy. He's still my stepson. Yep. Yeah. Um, what about your wave pool? I'm so interested in that. Um, you don't want to talk about there's that. No, there's no left, Doc. I know. I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not that interested. <laughs> It'll be hard. like Yeah, but um, what kind of... Is it like fresh water? Fresh water. So different board is better? Nope. Same? No. See, same. that's a myth. Yeah. It's a, it's a total myth because... Because I remember we... Well, skim boards aren't thick. Yeah. You know, it's all about planing. So mm -hmm. once you're up to planing speed, it has nothing to do with buoyancy. Oh, it's just okay. lift. Yeah. So, you know, once you catch, once you, you're done paddling, it, as long as you have speed, speed is what creates your lift and, mm -hmm. and your, your, your planing, right? And so, that wave gives you a lot of speed. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of speed. Plenty of speed. And it, so, you know, buoyancy only matters if you're on a wave where you're having to generate your own speed mm -hmm. and it's completely like a mush ball. You yeah, know? right. Like yeah. Huntington in, in between the outside and the inside. Yeah. Right, you want some buoyancy yeah, yeah, in your sure. board because you are sinking. Mm -hmm. So it's only at a speed that you're not up on a plane on your board is when it would make a difference. But mm -hmm. Nat Young came and surfed, and he's the first thing he said straight away was, "I there's no difference." He no goes, difference. "I thought there's gonna be a huge difference." Yeah, he goes, nothing. "I don't feel a difference yeah. at all." Because rem remember we had that contest at um, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that that wave was like five inches and yeah. Mushroom, like, well, and that would definitely have buoyancy issues. Yeah. For like an epoxy was better. I think we all kind of had them then. Yeah, yeah, but. And that was a weird one, right? Because it would send out like 13 waves or 15 yeah, waves. Yeah, all so close together. And I heard like the second wave and like the 13th wave yeah, the were the best waves best, or something. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> so nice. by that last wave, there would be some current going through it or something. Yeah, that was yeah. what Tom Carroll was telling me. Yeah. Did Tom win it, I think? I think Tom won. Yeah. And like Derek. Derek second. Yeah. Yeah. I got to yeah. the quarters, but it was funny because the water was like splashing over the side and the locals were spewing because they were in like a heavy drought. And they were like, you can't. Oh really? Yeah, you can't be doing that. Oh no way! <laughs> but yeah, that's, so. that that actually reminds me. I don't know if that was the same swing that came through the East Coast, and you surfed, you surfed down in Deerfield Beach or somewhere, uh, and you got third. I think Sean Thompson won, and yes, McCrannels yes. maybe got yep. second. Yep. And was that, that was, was, was that right? Virginia Beach. No, that was down in Florida actually. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, it was oh, somewhere. Oh, no, Florida. Yeah, actually. Somewhere yeah, south right. of Sebastian. It was, yeah. uh, it was warm, and we had a. Like there was nice little waves. Typhoon swell or something. Yeah, like, it was some hurricane or whatever. Hurricane, yeah. 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 yeah um, so um, that was one of the first times I actually 
I, I, well, I thought I was going to get to see you surf. I didn't come down and oh, you didn't. check it out, but I heard that you had gotten third. And, you know, back then it was, we didn't even have cell phones, you know, so it wasn't like you could hear yeah. straight away. It was like, yeah. uh, you know, you'd hear maybe a day later or two days later yeah. what happened because somebody was there. Oh, <laughs> guess who did what? Yeah, yeah. right. You but don't, like, tell but the Scott McCrannells was sort of like the him. mythical Florida guy who, was. like, you know, he was an underrated guy and mm. he had a big result there. Yeah. Speaking of like typhoons and hurricanes, I was just recently in Japan when the well the Olympics got um, accepted, accepted for, for surfing. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you keen on that? You think like I'm kind of you know I'm middle of the road on mm. it to be honest. I see good and bad. I mean, yeah. I don't know if I see so much bad, but I I just see like um, I I don't have much of an opinion. I yeah. I could I could make an argument for either side. Mm. Um, you know, I think the best surfer is determined by. A, a great number of different waves and sizes yeah. of, and conditions and uh you know you yeah. don't have that in one contest almost ever well no unless it's like pumping yeah um, you know what i mean like and but you know the, it does bring in the argument of is a wave pool viable uh, would, that, would that bring out the best surfer like in your wave pool well it would bring out everyone getting to ride the same wave yeah so in that condition whatever that condition that is yes it would be the best surfer yeah. yeah it would be but you could you know with a wave pool and consistent you know same playing field over and over like a skate ramp or whatever you can really break down each aspect of the surfing mm. right because you could really critique everybody's turn you know we're mm. gonna we're gonna take the one best turn and judge that we're gonna take the okay. one best air and judge mm. that we're gonna take the best tube and judge that all these different things and then and then maybe the best rides overall so there'd be mm. a, i think the format would change yeah you know i mean i have thought a lot about this not necessarily just recently but i've thought a lot about it for the 10, 12 years we've been working on the wave. Yeah, for sure. And thought, like, Is that how, how would long you, you've been working on that for? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, you know, how would you be able to judge? And it, it would it would change, it would definitely change uh, certain aspects of uh, how you look at, mm. how you judge a wave, you know. In the ocean, there's a, you can argue it, there's luck. You there's can so argue there's luck, an yeah. art to mm. figuring out, finding the best wave. Mm. It might be a sneaky inside barrel that you, mm. somebody didn't see. It mm. might be a bigger outside one somebody else is scared of. I mean, there's yeah, all those sure. kind of, variables and you know the judging plays into the type of wave it is too um and uh i think there there can oftentimes you know in a barrel wave like out here there's a lot of things that maybe can't be seen from the front yeah um so i think it, it brings in that sort of uh that debate about how would you judge it how many camera angles would there be yeah for uh, sure you know and, and how would you work the formats but you know Japan can have great Japan, waves, know, but it but can be tricky it and can, really it terrible. Could be flat. Yeah, it could that be flat. would that would suck for the you know if it was. It would be Olympics. bad for surfing. Yeah. yeah. So is there any chance that they could build like your wave pool there? And I mean, they got four years. Well, we got four years. Yeah, but I would think that they would have to have the pool maybe two years out, at least a year out, just to oh, okay. make sure there's no kinks in the thing mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, because you're dealing with software and mm -hmm. energy and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff, and and. Uh, you know, is the sky the limit for that? Like, I mean, can you make a, a seriously wave just like that, like big? Can't? Oh yeah, you, you I could. mean, it just comes down to money and money. space. Yeah, and space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you need. So you, you need could build like a six foot grinding Kira barrel. You could do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could. I mean, it's not hard. You can. We know how to make the swell. Yeah. It's a. It's you know how, how do you make the bottom and the right angle of peeling and how do you build sections and that's all the mm, evolution of where you would right. go with with uh with where it's at now is like building in sections that appeal to everyone you know not just like a one type maneuver or one type of surfer who likes it so you know how do you how do you make the this sort of wave and bottom that fits everyone's speed and style of surfing and mm. you know that that's fair enough for everyone too if you're talking com competitively but if you're just having fun you know you want to think of all those aspects and when you're designing it how do I make this fun for everyone? You know, because yeah. the, the average person surfing it They're is not going to be like no. a high level guy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They're going to be just, you know, your everyday kind of mm. surfer that cruises and maybe it didn't really ride the barrel that great. And they don't smash the lip and do errors. Mm. You know, they just kind of cruise and do cutbacks mm. and mm. have fun and want to feel the speed, you know. So you got to take that all into account. For sure. Because people like that will be mainly used, I guess, by like intermediate kind of surfers. Of on course, a regular yeah. basis. Yeah, I think pros think aren't so. always going to be there. Yeah. They're busy. I couldn't believe um, the look on your face. Was that the first time you ever saw it? Right? Yeah, well, I, when, in, person, you know, like, yeah. in person, yeah. I had seen, I was in Fiji and flew straight from Fiji last December mm -hmm. to, to the, straight to the pool, uh, straight to the property. And we, we got there late at night, went to sleep. And it was, I had been seeing videos 
uh, pictures and videos for about three days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Like as the wave was just starting to break, mm -hmm. like, cause they, you know, it's a machine and it's an expensive piece of mm -hmm. machinery and the, the equipment's state of the art. And uh, when all said and done now we have, you know, a software that's very simple and uh, an interface that's really easy to use. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, for guy for the couple of people who know how to use it, they yeah. could actually go there by themselves and turn the wave on and go ride it, I come back and reset it, and yeah. you know, there's that whole aspect. Oh, cool. But uh, but getting to that point, like I said, it's been years and years, and yeah, yeah. Um, but we had you know you, you really have to, it's like breaking in an engine, you know, mm. not only to have that aspect, but you got to figure out the software and the speeds and the amount of energy, and mm. you got to. There, you know certain measurements you have to be aware of and stuff so it, it's not like you just turn it on and we're going you yeah, know yeah. so it's like it's uh, when it's getting close it, it's a weeks long process that we yeah. had and we're, we're still working through that to be honest just to just so we know everything about what we have mm. but um yeah i showed up that morning and that was uh, we we it got there so and cool, I'd like. we got yeah. there and went to sleep and yeah i really couldn't sleep because i was like man tomorrow is it uh, a different it. thing like my life changes kind of yeah, i knew sure. i knew some in some way my life was going to change that like, next day like your life in surfing too pretty yeah much. but i was just like i don't i don't know what i'm getting into here i just mm. I, I was so excited like more than you christmas sleep, yeah. yeah and uh <laughs> and i mean I, I was like a freaking five-year-old at christmas i was just like <laughs> get us there but it was so cold it was cold it was so and cold was so i glassy. mean it was like uh you know it was like close to freezing oh, okay. in the morning and the air mm. And the water was like, you know, the water was a, somewhere between 49 and 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. So you're talking like eight, 10 degrees or whatever. Mm. It's really it's Celsius. No, at first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's like cold. 10, yeah. yeah, nine or 10. Wow. It was cold. And um, so I wasn't that. in a rush to jump in the water, <laughs> but I was in a rush to see it. So it was a funny yeah. little thing. Yeah. Um, and they had this whole film crew. So they were trying to make that go easy, but not let me know they were filming me. You know what I mean? So. They were trying to get the whole thing set up and like, okay, you sort of get there and watch it. Mm -hmm. And everyone pulled back while I watched it. There was like, you know, we had probably 30 people there or yeah. something. Yeah. But everyone kind of moved back and let me go. And I was just like so mesmerized yeah. by this thing that I was, I almost started crying. I was like, what am I looking at? Yeah. Here? I was like, I'm looking at sand spit. And we, no. we, can get, we got it. <laughs> it was so unbelievably glassy. Glassy, it didn't look yeah. Real. It, was, I was like, it looked fake. And I saw this thing coming at me and I, it, to me, I felt like it was a monster. Really? It was a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> And it was just like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, look, I go, there's no way that what I'm seeing is real. Yeah. And everyone who has watched that footage, every single person says the same thing. Like your face, the look on your face. I'm like, that's the look that everybody has when they see it the first time. When mm -hmm. you first get there and you see this thing, you, you just can't, you can't soak it up. You can't, you can't process what you're seeing. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so cool. Um, you've got to be the most adverse surfer in the world by miles. I mean, you've won the Eddie Pipe numerous, numerous times. Um, when you do like stop the, the actual WSL tour, any interest in doing big wave, um, events? Um, yeah, I'd like to do a couple. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've come close to doing a couple. I was going to do Jaws, mm -hmm. uh, last year. Yep. And, um, phew, I mean, God, that looks scary as hell. Didn't it? But, uh, <laughs> um, uh, funny enough, you know, the guy from Florida who got invited didn't go because he was surfing a wave pool that day. Oh, seriously? Yeah, there's some kind of sick joke in that. I know. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, like you missed the you missed the Jaws event to surf the, a wave pool. pool. Yeah, oh. but um, that was the day before. Actually, it was December fourth, I believe. We surfed the pool, and that was on December fifth, or mm -hmm. it was December fifth, and Jaws was December sixth, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I had surfed all day, and we were going to surf the whole next day, but then we decided. We're gonna shut down and do more work on the on the oh, on the okay. lake and everything yeah. and, and and the machinery. Um, so I was basically I, and I was beat. I mean, I had surfed I surfed like uh, I think I caught 26 waves that day. Oh, you did? Yeah. And yeah, and how many in the pool? You mean? Yeah, in the on the wave that day. I think I read like oh, 23 or 26 wow. waves, and you know a whole wave goes like 45 seconds. Oh, it does. It, well, yeah, it can go longer even actually, but. Uh, it can know, go longer. The, well, the wave is it's just long, so your legs are fried. Mm. And um, How many minutes in between the wave can you do it? How, well, how often? We, we didn't make it go both ways. Like, we didn't, make, we didn't design it to where it can send a wave left oh, and the then other right. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, you know, had we done that, it could be almost could immediate. Get, almost but, immediate? Yeah. Okay. But oh, because you've got the water down one end. 
Is no, that, 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 that's the thing because we didn't put in like the water dampeners and stuff. So uh -huh. you do have this sort of sloshing. Oh, and so you got to wait for it to settle. Yeah, you got to wait for wait for it to settle. But mm -hmm. you, if you're riding it by yourself, you couldn't you couldn't turn around and ride a wave that quickly because your legs hurt anyway. So yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I mean, sometimes when I'm riding it, I'll usually, if I want to ride the barrel, yeah. I'll just, I'll wait till my legs are totally fine and the water's completely glassy and I'll just go again. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, I'm, and, and, uh, you know, some days that I've been there, I've only ridden like three waves in the whole day because I'm just like, I'm fine and my yeah. legs are sore, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, like, when the wave's slower, you do more turns. When the wave's faster, you're just mm. getting barreled and you don't burn mm. your legs so much. So, yeah. How do you get golden tickets? Um, well, you got to enter the uh, prize. Yeah, okay. you, online. You don't actually. I don't. What do you no, mean? No, no, you're a world champ. You get to come anytime you want. Are you serious? Yeah. No way. Oh, I'd so. love to bring J Boy. <laughs> J Boy's just for us over there. Just he might. Me. He's got to win a ticket. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. Jay boys is for us over there. He's like, Dude, uh, I want to go there. Yeah. It's like unbelievable. It's so hard for me. I'm in a funny position, you know, because I, I, re I, Rick, I want to say yes to everybody. Yeah, right. In fact, I, uh, I got a group of like, 22 of my friends together. We were gonna yeah. go for two or three days. Okay. And um, and all go surf together. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to tell them we couldn't. Really? Yeah, it was hard because we had the dates like locked in, yeah. and then we decided to shut down and do some more work on the oh, thing work and, on it. and oh, okay. so I had to tell him no and it was like I was trying to take him straight like I kept giving him these dates and I went okay hard date is yeah, you yeah. know in June or whatever I, and then I had to do us you guys oh, I'm sorry. sorry and like a couple of my friends had already bought tickets from Hawaii to oh, come shit. and stuff I was like <laughs> oh man I'm sorry but uh yeah I mean and you know it's not my personal property mm. I mean I'm I'm a part owner and the whole deal obviously but yeah but uh you know there's other people yeah for sure at, at, uh there and you know just uh with something like this it's a you know you wouldn't let everyone go drive your ferrari you know yeah right. and <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> maybe you would yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um have your bugatti veron you know like yeah. you, you might just not let everybody come straight away and drive the thing no. so it's, you know, we got to know what we have and how it works and, mm. and what, you know, there, you got to think about all the safety precautions and how many people uh, it wow. can access it at one time and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, how it functions to where everyone's enjoying themselves and there's enough space for everybody, but, but you know, privacy at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of, lot of things, but, you know, this will always be our prototype. Yeah, okay. Um, so being a prototype, we... Um, We'll, we'll probably do a lot of work on it over the years yeah, okay. and uh, still and work in progress and study and just study and study and study. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Um, so moving on from your pool, like uh, I love the way you live. You've got a place like pretty much everywhere: Hawaii, mm. Australia, yeah, um, America, yeah, um, South Africa. No, no. Yeah. But my friend's got a place right on the point. So I stay at his house. <laughs> he does. I'm actually there almost as much as he is. You are. Hey. Yeah, I mean, he spends about a month there, a nice uh, week, a year, maybe six weeks, and I spend two weeks. So. Yeah, that's what, he's not there very much. Yeah, but uh, no, it's that's the thing, you know. This our life is so nomadic, and mm, your life it's is fun. But it's uh, I think I made that decision really early on in my life, probably yeah. when I was in my teens or you about did. about twenty, that I just went, man, this is so fun. Yeah, you c you can't get enough of this stuff. It's and you're not a routine guy. No, not a routine guy. In fact, I feel I almost don't know what to do when I have to stay in one place. And you, don't, hey? no, you don't. You hey. don't. Not really. Oh no, cause I'm I mean, I have enough time, enough things to fill up my time, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I don't get in a routine yeah. at all like I'm sure you do or Mick does or whatever. Yeah. People who are more grounded one spot more often. Mm, I like it. I mean, I am a routine kind of guy when I'm home. It's just like drop the kids off at school, have a surf, train, and then I've got my favorite show, TV show in the afternoon, and then I've got the new Gold Coast News, and mm. then... I can do we, that. We watch I can Food do that Network all the time. Oh, we like do? Food Network back home. Yeah. That's funny because that's <laughs> my next question. How <laughs> is your diet going? You like your diet is incredible. It's it has pretty been good. I ages. mean, you know, I'm not like crazy, crazy uh, over the top about it. Yeah. But you know, I, I, um, if I start getting like kind of loose with my diet and like start eating some fried foods or oh, you you know, do too sometimes? much of this or that, yeah, now and then, you know, and then yeah. I, and then I'm like, mm, so, uh, okay, yeah. come on, let's settle down. And I, I just find when I when I eat too many too much food and too many foods that i don't feel as good yeah, yeah. and my body's not functioning as well my mm -hmm. system's not working as well um i mean I, that would sort of be my question for you how's your diet what's, your, what's going on with your really diet good. yeah i've lost like 
like 15 kilos. I was big last yeah, time you I saw you. you have, well, I've, you've I've, historically been able to fluctuate and then take weight off like, yeah, like pretty quick. You're like an exaggerated Sonny. <laughs> like Sonny yeah, is sunny big and we're like, oh, Sonny's big. But like, as yeah. you I'm like, he just well. lost 50 pounds. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, my diet, so yeah, I cut out everything like all bread, rice, sugar, and everything. Uh, and my... I used to love like potato chips, but I eat almonds now because I, like, I know you love almonds. And yeah. I eat almonds instead of um, potato chips now. So that's everything's out. I feel so mm. much better. I've been training with um, that guy, Nam, that trains me. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been really good for me. He kind of got me on that diet and I was like so big. He's like, you're going to do this. I'm like, really? I couldn't see it. He's like, no, nah, you're going to do it. One of my good friends, um, you know, he had an extra 25, 30 pounds on yeah. and he's not a big guy, you know, as is he, me and him would probably be similar he's mm -hmm. a little taller than me so he mm -hmm. maybe be five or ten pounds more than me at, mm -hmm. at his sort of like slim weight um and uh he all well he started working out and stuff but he really changed did the same thing cut out all did the white it. flour yeah. um cut out all the sugars mm -hmm. cut out the gluten mm -hmm. um he got really uh, all about it and he started like carrying juices to work with I a did, cooler yeah. and mm -hmm. like he sh he dropped 25 30 pounds like he did. quickly Real yeah. Quick, yeah. yeah yeah and and uh feels way better looks mm. way better way happier boy i mean happy. i just get there's a thing you know there's there's a there's obviously like a a generation of massively obese people in america mm. and unfortunately people who tend to follow the american diet the, they call it sad standard american diet okay. is just terrible it's it's low fat it's yeah. high carbs mm. it's high calories mm. it's um basically high processed terrible you know uh just kind of tends completely into processed like zombie like doesn't it yeah it's just modified food it's not it's not natural creation mm. and and uh you know i think that the the more n close to natural foods raw you can eat and with fewer foods per meal the, the easier your body processes things you know yeah. i mean it, it, when i've gone through periods where i'm really into it it's like I, I want a food combined where I'm not mixing my proteins and carbs. Yeah. I want to just eat as as streamlined as I possibly can. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, we're so used to, in our diets, to macronutrients, right? Mm -hmm. Like big foods like chicken yeah. or steak yeah. or fish, mm. uh, pot potatoes or whatever. But you got to mm -hmm. think about the micronutrients, and the yeah. your chlorellas and your spirulinas yeah. and yeah, your, yeah, all yeah. your supplementing. Yeah. And, um, I uh, love spirulina. I mean, I really think that that's been a, a huge uh, part of my longevity. being able to have longevity, yeah. yeah. And I see people, you know, what I was going to say though about like where society's at now. I've, I'm so inspired. I follow. There's people I follow online that have just lost tremendous amounts of weight. Yeah. You know, the guy from Australia that I follow online. Yeah. From the Gold Coast, rides his bike, and uh, he lost like 300 pounds in a year or wow. something like that. Like crazy. And, and did he keep it up? Yeah, he did. And yeah. he's riding his bike and he's yeah. all about his diet and stuff. Yeah. And it, um, but I get so inspired by those people, you know, I mean, obviously I get inspired by the Michael Phelps of the world and stuff like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know? about that because I saw a photo with you and Michael Phelps. How amazing was he? Yeah, he's incredible. He's, he's incredible. He's unbelievable. But I, I mean, just it doesn't have to be anybody special, your average yeah. everyday person who's got a challenge. You know, it could be getting himself out of like an abusive relationship. It could be, sure, uh, yeah. you know, stopping drugs. It could mm -hmm. be. You know, losing weight it didn't mm. you don't have to go set the world on fire mm. and do something no one's ever done to inspire people you know yeah it's like and a little snowball thing eh? as soon as yeah. you get you like you inch into it and you feel good and then you're like actually you, i can feel good yeah and then it snowballs from there yeah it's incredible i i, I do I've, I've done a couple of master cleanses before yeah i don't know if you know the master cleanse but it's no. just like the lemonade where you just it's lemon maple syrup and and uh and water with but the cayenne long, pepper and how and long? Well, I, I've done it for ten days, my wow. longest. And that's it, with no food. No, no food. Wow. And um, how do you uh, You feel? take some other supplements. You do some like uh, where you drink like a liter of uh, salt water, hot salt water in the wow. morning to flush your system out. Wow. And um, but do you feel, you feel terrible after you, you two you days? Oh, you feel oh you're just like detoxing oh. so hard. Yeah. But then you feel amazing after three, four days. Wow. You get start getting clear. Like Look your vision clear. feels better, and you yeah, hear. Yeah. I don't know everything. Yeah, yeah. Your sinuses clear up. Mine do, anyways. Mm, I have pretty mm, bad sinuses. Yeah. But uh, I wanted. There was this one time I wanted to do it, and I kept talking to Trevor Hendy about it. Yeah. And I kept going. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And then he started it, and he got like three or four days ahead of me. And I was yeah. in the states, and he was in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I talked, and he goes, "You're never gonna start this thing, are you?" Oh, really? I was like, "Damn it! I gotta start today." <laughs> and I just uh, I started that day. And then I went uh, for like 10 days. I only had about two weeks between contests. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you need to try to get back in your, yeah. you need to get 
that energy food going again mm. after. But uh, I did it for, I think, I had nine or ten days I did it. But I accelerated. I wanted to do 14 days, but I accelerated it by taking more of like the smooth move teas that clear everything out mm -hmm. and, and uh, some of the supplementing you do along with it. But uh, man, you feel good after. And the first piece of food you eat after oh, 10 man. days, oh my God. Straight away. Like, I, I came off of one, I did, a, I did like a five or six day water fast once yeah. and I came off it by eating a date and it was the, I think it was the best thing I've ever eaten my whole life. Oh, it was like a sugar ash? It, was a, it, it just was like the best <laughs> bite of food. And then the one thing is after you do, after you abstain from food, for for a long period of time, you just respect the food way much yeah. more, way more. You yeah. know, you 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 don't want to put something bad in your body because that's the pain you went through. Yeah. To you know, because whatever. you're eating that crap. Yeah. You got to go through this kind of like mm. rebirthing of yourself to get mm. get yourself back, mm -hmm. and so you know, it makes it inspires you personally to want to eat better and you know share that experience with other people. Yeah. But from from Trevor jumping on doing that. Trevor being the Iron Man legend yeah, from yeah. Australia. Yeah. But for, from Trevor doing that fast, and then I did it, and then a whole bunch, of, like 20 or 30 other people oh, I knew really did fun. it because of that, you know, because just like like you said, that snowball. Mm. Once somebody gets on something, you start sharing mm -hmm. it around, and people are like, whoa, what's going on yeah. with you? You look really clear in your yeah, eyes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's cool. exciting. Super cool. Well, I won't keep you for much longer, but the million-dollar question is retirement and another world title. Um, <coughs> I mm. seriously believe you can do it. Is it something that you will stay? You think I can retire? Can? No, I think you can win another world title. Yeah. I swear, I think you can retire, Kelly. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you got me wrong. That was like the first question. Um, um, yeah, no, I seriously think you can win another one. And um, are you going to stay till you do that? I think no. I mean, look, I'm not going to sit here and beat I mean, myself over the titles, head. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm. Look, I'm still. Just I'm. I'm happy. I yeah. look back and I go, man, mm. I had a lot of work and a lot of things went my way over yeah. the years. You know, oh really? Yeah. yeah I, I had a lot of heats that went my way, just a crucial heat early in a contest where you just get that score and then you win or something, you know, mm -hmm. and, then, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the year you look back and you've got it, I only won by three or four heats or one heat, yeah. and that one heat that I won was the that was gave me five more heats in that contest, you know, yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But uh, I also find that it's like, you know, water finds its level, and at the end of the day, whatever result you get, you either rest on that and you're stoked with it, mm -hmm. or if you have a, you know, I think for anyone going for a world title, if you when you have a loss, it eats you up. And you're yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna wipe that thing off my plate next contest. That's gonna, I'm gonna get rid of that thing. And, Does it eats you in between yeah, so event to event, I've, yeah. I've found sometimes when I had bad results, it actually made me go on a run that yeah, right. where I did yeah. better than I probably would uh -huh. have had I not had that loss, yeah. you know? And, um, but as far as world titles go, I mean, I, Man, I lost it by a heat to, uh, I, I lost one by a heat to Andy once. Yeah. I lost one by a heat to Mick once. I lost mm. one by a heat to Joel once. Mm. Uh, and I also yeah. I also had three or four that I won by one heat. Yeah, right. So, But it, those times, like, if that went the other way, that we'd be talking 14 world titles. Had the, yeah, had the, yeah. yeah, but things can't go your way that <laughs> much, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and there's always... You always look back on that year and go, God, what could I, what could I have done differently, yeah. or what, you know, what happened for that other guy that went really well for him, or, um, and, y you know, you find that there's so many things that go into a year's worth yeah. of, of results that, um, man, it could go a million different ways. Yeah, you just sure. got to be happy with it in the end yeah. if you win it. Mm. But, um, so world title, I feel like I have the ability. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would be here competing if I didn't feel ah, I had that yeah. that ability. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's been obvious in the good waves that I've had the results and the, in the worst waves I haven't had the results, but I also, um, you know, no excuses. I've gotten out surf plenty of times, but I also haven't had the desire to yeah. really just be on my game. And I, th I was thinking back on it yesterday, actually, how many times I was so, so excited to surf like a one foot piece of crap in Japan really? or like, <laughs> you know, at the Coke contest at Manly yeah. or Narabeen or something, you know, where... Or, or in Brazil where the waves were bad and I was like, I'm just, I want to win so bad. Mm. And I haven't had that kind of same hunger and, unless the waves are good. Um, yeah, and, but yeah. you know, when we had like Chopu two years ago or yeah. Fiji even this year or whatever, like I just wake up and I'm like, give yes. me anything, give you know, me <laughs> I want to kill somebody. <laughs> but I, it just brings out that excitement. And um, I think in order to win another world title, I would really have to find that again yeah. uh, in all conditions. In all conditions. In yeah. all conditions yeah. and just and be super decisive, not be playing around with my board choices and stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm, 
I'm so bored by the conditions or the waves that, mm. that, I, that I need to, I don't know if I'm trying to challenge myself, but I'm trying to ride something that is going to make me feel excited. Yeah. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. You know, maybe just a weird board, a but weird it might board. do something yeah. great in a certain yeah. wave or, and, and uh, just I make just, it, mix it up, make it look different too. And feel not, different. Yeah. And it's not really the way to go about how to, wanting uh, to win a heat. Like you want to be on your magic board, right? You know what? Be on similar <laughs> I mean, equipment to the other guy and outsurf him. Yeah. yeah and, um, yeah. you know, I talked to Shane Haran extensively about this last mm. year mm -hmm. and even this year and um, Shane Shane actually coached me a little bit earlier this year I know why um, uh, yeah but I didn't w I lost early yeah. you did <laughs> <laughs> it's not his fault not your fault <laughs> Shane. I oh, just uh, yeah I, um, I fell on a couple here and there yeah. so um, but uh, no I talked to Shane a lot about the alternative equipment and he goes you know what man I wish that I hadn't been so oh, when big headed he was, when he was doing his lasers yeah, he goes I wish things. that I had conformed to what the standard was and surf thrusters guaranteed and you know a Shane title, told me right? that with his uh, from his own mouth and I was like wow that's cool to hear because yeah you wonder if he was always been that stubborn to think he could have smoked everyone on single fins and like little two foot waves where they're riding twins and flying like Dane mm. Kilohaw's going 100 miles an mm. hour mm. Burley or mm. or uh, you know Pat Mulhern mm. on the east coast and and you know getting little barrels and throwing his tail out mm. and in these little you know B and C rated events mm. and stuff like the record bar pro mm. or like mm. you know certain there was three events in the east coast back in the day yeah and, there uh, was you know Shane was on tour at that time but mm. um, uh, yeah I, was, I mean I was getting off track there but funny enough Rabbit told me he goes you know Pat Mulhern was my guy because Pat Mulhern would always beat Shane on the east coast yeah right. he would get barreled on every any day and that's what got Rabbit world title <laughs> yeah I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he guaranteed would have won a world title if he stuck to thrusters. Yeah, I mean Shane was so good. His his style and his oh, low yeah. center of gravity oh, yeah. was unmatched by anyone. And his power, his you know he, he you guys have a similar build similar, in the legs. Yeah, yeah. That low center of gravity, the short, stumpy, mm. powerful legs, and you know Shane could like almost have his butt down on the board and just be driving from that position and not tire his legs out, you mm, know? Mm. Kind of like, I mean, if there's a guy in toy like that now, it's Michelle Perez. Yeah, you know? I was just thought of him. But Shane like. had this classic calm, conform, like not conform, this calm, uh, um, in control style, mm. right? His yeah. style was beautiful. Beautiful. And he, you know, he's one of the more stylish guys on tour, I think. And uh, yeah. he kind of had to be because of the single fin, I think. Yeah, for But sure. I always... I just yearned when I was a kid to see him on a thruster, a twin fin. Did you ever try to? Did you ever try a keel fin? I he gave me one, and did I never you? made a board for it. You didn't. No, yeah. but yeah. Um, I did for a little while. It was super weird. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of felt all right here and there, but it, you could never could connect anything with it. Yeah. So retirement. Um, yeah. Yeah. I look forward to it. You do. I do. Yeah, I look forward to it. Um, Kalani must. <laughs> <laughs> Yes and no. I mean, yes and no. Yeah, but way. you know, Kalani, she loves to travel too. Yes, she does. I don't yeah. think when we first started dating, she loved it so much. But now it's like it's part of our lives, yeah. and it's you know all the places we go, we have a lot of friends, mm. family friends, people we stay with. Uh, you know, we look forward to getting back to those places. Yeah. So in that way, you know, I my question for you would be like, do you miss that a little? Not necessarily I having to that. surf Connors every week, but like seeing those people around the world. You know, I do. I do. Um, not that you can't go like, see them. No, not that I can't. I mean, like a Sharon from South Africa, like for example, definitely yeah, yeah. miss stuff like that. I mean, I but Billabong still make me travel heaps, so I'm still traveling. Ah, oh, bastards! Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like in Israel. I was in Japan. I was home for a week. I was in Japan. I'm home for a week. I'm here. I'm home for a week. I go to Mentawi's. Home for a week, Portugal. So you went, with, you went to Chile with Shano last year. I did. Yeah. yeah. And. Yeah. Um, I wish I was fit then. The waves were pumping. I hardly surfed. That's what he told me. He was kind of <laughs> bummed. Yeah, no, no, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> Courtney was like ripping then. It was so cold. That was my excuse. But like right at the end, the locals are like, we got to see you surf once. So I like put on my wetsuit and got out there. This local guy made me jump off a cliff to get out there. I was freaking. But yeah, but it's great to be back in shape. Yeah. And it's great to have you on my upcast. Thank you so much, Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, man. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you thanks, so man. much. And Kalani, thank you, darling. All right. Okay. Thank you.